In this video, we're going to explain what happens when you have a cache miss, whether for read or write. We'll assume that you already understand how to determine whether an address is stored in the cache, though we'll review that very briefly. We do have a separate video on that topic. First, recall that, conceptually at least, memory is just a large byte addressable array. Whenever a program references an address from memory, the memory system must deliver the current contents of that address to the processor. The implementation is much more complex and likely involves caching. A cache is a small, fast storage device that serves as a staging area for a subset of the data from a larger, slower memory. The contents of addresses that have been accessed recently, or which the processor thinks might be accessed in the near future, are copied into the cache. Subsequent accesses to those locations will be fast, compared to accesses to locations that are not stored in the cache. For caching to work, we need to be able to determine whether the contents of a given address referenced by the program are currently stored in the cache. If so, that's called a cache hit. Otherwise, we have a cache miss. In the case of a hit, we simply deliver the contents of that memory location from the cache. In the case of a miss, we typically copy a block of data from memory into the cache. That block must contain the address of the current access, but also some neighboring addresses. The underlying presumption is that addresses that have been referenced recently and addresses in the vicinity of those that have been accessed recently are more likely to be accessed in the near future than other random addresses. This property is called locality. Once in the cache, Subsequent accesses to those addresses will be fast. Let's describe a typical cache architecture. The cache is divided into an array of S sets, numbered from 0 to S minus 1. S is typically a power of 2. In turn, each set contains E lines. The number of lines per set is determined by the cache designer. If there's only a single line per set, it's called a direct mapped cache. If there's more than one line per set, it's called a set associative cache. Finally, each line contains the contents of B consecutive memory addresses, where B also is a power of two. Associated with each line is a valid bit, indicating whether the data in that line are reliable or not. We can ignore any line for which the valid bit is zero. There is additionally a tag field, which is just a fixed length bit string. We'll see in a moment how that's used. For concreteness, let's assume that addresses in our system are 12 bits long. Our cache must be designed for these 12-bit addresses. Here's a sample address for this system. When determining whether this address is stored in the cache, we break the address into three fields, the tag field, the set index, and the block offset. In this case, the tag field is 4 bits, the set index is 5 bits, and the block offset is 3 bits. The size of the set index tells us that our cache contains 2 to the 5, or 32 sets. The size of the block offset says that each line contains 2 to the 3, or 8 bytes of data. Each line also contains a tag of 4 bits, the same size as the tag field in an address. To determine whether the contents of an address are stored in the cache, we first use the set index to identify the set. In our example, the set index is 01010, or 10 in decimal. Thus, if this address is stored in the cache, it must be stored in set 10. For this example, we'll assume a two-way set associative cache, meaning that each set contains exactly two lines of data. But most of what we describe here is independent of the associativity of the cache. We compare the tag field from our address with the tag fields of all of the lines in set 10. We find that there is a valid line with a matching tag field. Thus, we have a cache hit. Finally, to access the address memory location, we use the 3-bit block offset field from the address to index into the array of bytes within the line. In this case, our block offset field is 100, or 4, so the contents of our address are at index 4 in the byte array. Often we'll be accessing a series of bytes beginning at that address. 
But let's see what happens if the access check fails. That is, if the referenced address is not stored in the cache. This might happen because we look into the set and there is no line with the indicated tag field. Or it might be that the tag is there, but the line is marked invalid. In either case, we have a cache miss. A cache miss typically requires that we read into the cache a block of addresses containing the referenced address. This is not universally true. Specifically, if we're trying to write to an address not in the cache, and the cache implements a no write allocate strategy, then we bypass the cache and update the address directly in the lower level of the memory hierarchy. But let's ignore that special case and assume that any miss requires copying a block of data into the cache. The size of this block is determined by the number of bytes stored in a cache line. For our example, each line contains eight bytes. Thus, for any cache miss, we'll always fetch eight bytes of data. Suppose, for our previous example, that we had a cache miss because neither of the lines in set 10 had the indicated tag field. Whenever there's a cache miss, we have to read in a line of data. That is, we need to fill one of the lines in the set with eight bytes of data from memory. But which eight bytes? Of course, it has to be a block of data that contains the requested address. All eight addresses must have the same set index bits and the same tag bits as our requested address, which only leaves the three block offset bits to specify. These can vary from 000 to 111. Consequently, the eight addresses we read from memory must be these. Note, we're guaranteed that the indicated address will be one of these. We read the contents of these addresses into the eight successive bytes in one of the lines in the set, replacing whatever is there. But which line? That depends on the replacement policy of the cache. One common replacement policy is least recently used, or LRU. That means that we replace whichever line in the set has been referenced least recently. Our implementation must keep track of that information. In our current example, let's suppose that we decide to replace the line with tag 1111 and keep the other one. Let's also suppose that our eight memory addresses have these values. These eight values are read into the successive bytes in the line. The valid bit is set to 1, and the tag is set to the tag field from the address, namely 0110. Finally, the contents of the requested address are supplied to the processor. Subsequent accesses to that address, or any of the other seven addresses stored in the line, will result in a cache hit and fast response time, as long as the data remains in the cache.